So the general uh, celestial signs from today until May 25th. And then we're going to zoom in on this weekend. So today we have the moon and the sun at perihelion, so physically closest to one another, and the conjunction of the moon and the messenger planet Mercury. And this is what that looks like against the backdrop of Aries. So Mercury on the border of the constellation Aries, the moon well within its bounds, and Jupiter is on the verge of entry, but not just yet. So Jupiter, if you look at it from the ecliptic downward, is aligning with the wedding knot star, Elrisha, where the two fish are bound to Cetus, the sea monster. And tomorrow, the king planet and man-child of Revelation 12 is going to enter the constellation Aries. So the transition from the waters or the celestial sea on to dry land, the throne room. And remember the account in scripture where the disciples saw the Lord standing on the shore. So this is what that reminds me of. So we have the constellation Aries with Jupiter, Mercury on the border, the Virgins, Vesta inside, Uranus, the type of Uranus, the kingdom of heaven associated with Enoch, and then the moon will move forward toward the constellation Taurus. So um, on the 18th, or sorry, on the 19th, the moon will transition from Aries into the constellation Taurus. The astronomical new moon, the coming together of the sun and the moon at uh, 1854 Jerusalem time, um, the Echad phase, so the bride and the bridegroom coming together as one. So we see the moon transitioning from Aries into Taurus, and then they're going to be as one at the heap or the flock of doves, the seven churches uh, in the book of Revelation. Uh, and that's just prior to the actual alignment of the sun in a 90 degrees angle with the Pleiades. So we first have the meeting of the bridegroom and the bride coming together, Echad, as one in the constellation Taurus. And then the moon will move forward on the ecliptic. On uh, the 19th at 144 is the uh, central uh, star of the belt stars of Orion. That is most likely the pyramid that was drawn by the then very young Swedish boy. And uh, I'm also keeping an eye on a potential fulfillment of his vision from Friday to Sunday. So, uh, once again, I think this is a copy. We have covered that. Yes, the right ascension of Jupiter at um, the day it transitions from Pisces into Aries will be exactly 153.55. And the right ascension is uh, drawn out over here. I couldn't find a another uh, depiction of the cosmology, so this is a, a heliocentric picture, but the right ascension is marked out as the point from the vernal equinox and the position of a star as opposed to the vernal equinox, the declination and the right ascension. And for Jupiter, that is going to be 153.55. So at the timestamp of that Swedish boy's vision on Friday, the constellation Ursa Major, the larger sheepfold, in addition to the constellation of the king, Cepheus, will be at meridian at their daily culmination. And Ursa Major is also known as Elijah's chariots or Elijah's wagon. At that same time, Venus will rise in the constellation Gemini, now depicted as two brothers, but so that or, or biblically, that is where the bride and the groom are found. And there's an asteroid there with my name, <laughs> so I had never punched in my name on uh, Stellarium before. And then I found the uh, 
asteroid with my name in the constellation Gemini, and it's going to conjoin with Venus on the 19th. And as I was asking the Lord if he was speaking to me specifically, um, I didn't get a direct answer, but when I looked back at the position of this asteroid at the time that I was born, I saw that it was exactly on the alpha and omega point on the ecliptic. So I just wanted to share that with you. So May 19th to 20, the uh, Torah readings about the wilderness in the book of Numbers chapter 1, and of course the reference to Mahar Chodesh, the new moon marker in the account of 1 Samuel 20. David is going to be absent from that enemy banquet. He knows what Saul is up to. He is aware that it's not just a spirit of control and that Saul is wayward from the Lord and rebellious, disobedient. But because of the spirit of jealousy has taken hold on Saul to such an extent that he is persecuting and hunting David, David is being given wisdom to not partake in this lunar banquet, to not sit at the evident enemy's table. Uh, Jonathan has not been given that full discernment just yet. He decides to stand up for David during that banquet and becomes familiar with the evil intent of his father, not just toward David, but also toward him because he stands up for David and uh, is thrown a javelin. So that is potentially a foreshadowing of an enemy attack against their own on the second day of the banquet. We've talked about that many times. But I am now led to share that it is important in our lives as believers to maintain healthy boundaries. We know what to do in the spirit when we are confronted with a spirit of um, Jezebel of control. But if that is coupled with jealousy, it can actually be a very, very strong force. So as he gives us discernment, we know what to do spiritually to overcome that. We have the keys to bind and loose, but it also means that sometimes in the natural, we have to um, decide what to partake in and what not to, to uphold healthy boundaries. It can also impact the relationships we have. And um, that combination of the spirit of uh, Jezebel, in addition to like unrestrained jealousy, is something to be very mindful of. And Jonathan comes to that realization during that particular new moon banquet. So on the 20th of May, we can see that the moon is going to align with the Pleiades cluster and the alignment with Delta Tauri to the Hyades cluster, the congregated believers in the forehead of the bull. And if you were to draw that line further, you come to the belt stars of Orion and the morning star series. We're gonna see that a little bit later. So the uh, alignment of the moon with the horn of Taurus. So the two horns of Taurus are associated with Joseph and his two sons, the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh. And we've spoken about Taurus being the sign for the Aleph, the Alpha in scripture. And there was a beautiful video by our sister from Ecru Symphony who saw the um, marker in the heavens for the sign of Aleph. And uh, the Lord showed me that the asteroid Esther uh, in alignment with the moon is actually creating that Aleph sign. So we have the uh, Aleph sign of the Lord being both the Alpha and we know he's also the Omega. And I believe the two crosses unifying, we can also see two crosses in the same alignment uh, are unifying in that same sign. So I believe that was a beautiful finding. And we see the sun drawing nigh, nigher and nigher to the Pleiades. Meanwhile, Venus in the constellation Gemini, the bride and groom, is not just going to align with that little tiny uh, Sabine asteroid, but also with the asteroid uh, Tira, uh, referring to the door, uh, that was a finding from Brother Carl from Earth to Spirit Warrior, uh, another lovely channel. 
and the uh, zenith cosmology over Chichen Itza. So we all know that the spring equinox marker of the snake slithering down. Um, but there is also a marker on May 20th of the uh, Pleiades being at, at zenith, so at the culmination point. And this is a star cluster within the Pleiades uh, that may connect to the reference in the Book of Enoch of the fallen angels also being bound there. So if you look at this particular star cluster with uh, a little more attention and spiritual eyes, uh, I could actually see these figures appearing to be bound there. And I don't know for sure, but I just wanted to show it to you. Mars, the planet associated with war in the Archangel Michael, has entered the constellation Cancer, now depicted as a crab, but biblically it's the cattle fold, where the redeemed of the Messiah are held fast. The uh, connection to the manger in the M44 beehive cluster, uh, also known as Persepa. So this is the uh, resting place for the pilgrims. So in addition to Mars having entered, the asteroid palace is also uh, in this homecoming cluster on the 20th of May. And then on the 21st, the lead up to the beautiful sign of the Sun and the Pleiades, Mars is going to align with the asteroid Elias in the constellation Cancer. So Zooming in on May 1921, the, reun the reunion with our Lord. John's visitation to the throne room, Revelation 1, makes reference to the sun's position in conjunction with the Pleiades in Taurus as the solar servant candle without any shadow, standing before the seven candlesticks or the seven churches, likened to the seven-armed temple menorah, the Pleiades, the ancient celestial harbinger of spring, heralded the morning of the year when darkness is turned into dawn and the winter shadows and cold have to make way. The reference is in Amos 5. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with, with a garment down to the foot, and gird about with the paths of uh, gird gird about the paths with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, holy purifying fire. I wrote there, and his purifying fire can either burn off our chaff, uh, but it's also aimed against those who touch the apple of his eye, his bride. So. Eyes being aflamed can also be because they have been poked. And remember that the Lord elsewhere in Scripture says that he who touches his beloved will touch the apple of his eye. So the purifying fire, uh, which is a uh, beautiful picture of sanctification in our lives, um, the fiery eyes can also be a picture of his anger toward those who touch his anointed, the apple of his eye, his bride. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, the Pleiades, the seven churches on Taurus's back, which are gazed upon by Ares, depicting the Lord with hair white as wool. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shining in his strength. We have the sword of division, the sword of the Lord, the conjunction of the sun with the Pleiades and Taurus, marking the beginning of spring, summer being nigh, even at the doors, when the sun is going to shine in its strength. And when I saw him, John speaking, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. He is speaking of himself as the Alpha and the Omega. Taurus speaks of the Lord's finished work, his complete redemption consummated in triumph by the sacrificed red heifer, Jesus himself, the Alpha or the Aleph, and the Omega or the Top, 
marked out by the two horns of the bull.